So, yeah, people are saying, so that's a parallel with the early days. It's like, nothing to see here, move on. How dare you question us? Like, oh, no, we've been great from the beginning. We're just solid Baptists. And Welcome to Contra Talk. I've got Mark Coppinger here again. Uh, we've had him before, and uh, we're going to talk about some more things that are pressing the church. Um, hot button issues, hot topic issues, and the like. So I hope you enjoy this conversation, and uh, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Thanks, 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 thanks for Richard. being here again. Yeah. Um, so we're both in the SBC. You've been a long, long time um, SBC guy. And mm -hmm. of course you were, you were the president at Midwestern in the nineties, right? Conservative resurgence, the ship yeah. turning around, yeah. uh, you know, the Indiana convention, right. And of course a professor, pastor, church planter, uh, you went to Southwestern back in the day. Yeah. And, um, and I was vice president for public relations for the executive committee, right. which yeah. is an edited SBC life. We started SBC life. And so cool. kind of, uh, connected with the image and the press relationships and so forth of the convention. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so you've been, obviously you've been around a long time and that's wonderful, especially just, you know, having the experience and now we're seeing similar things with, um, you know, some of the old, the old guards gone, right. As far as, you know, the Billy Graham's, the Adrian Rogers, uh, a lot of those guys that were really uh, integral W.A. Criswell and the like, they're gone, and some of those young guys are now older, right, uh, as that always happens. What is the parallels between, say, if it was 1980, 1978, even 1990, and to, say, the convention in 2021, 2019, yeah. and the, where's the battles? Where, the, where, where do you see the parallels and the, the fight happening? Well, right. Uh, you know, there are parallels, and then there are disjunctions. Uh, let me walk around it a bit. I mean... Obviously, uh, I mean, the old joke is where you got two Baptists, you have three opinions. And we are <laughs> we are folks who have yeah. uh, interesting differences on this and that. And, of course, we have differences over Calvinism or not and differences over worship and what's what's appropriate CCM or do we just sing, you know, hymns or do we sing the Psalter and all kinds of things like that. So we're, we're interesting folks, uh, definitely. And even I remember in seminary, I was astonished that there was conflict uh in mission mission uh, i guess missiology uh you know you would have uh one person said you need to have compounds and uh gather together and strength uh kind of not bunkers but you have uh, hospitals and and uh, universities and or colleges and seminaries and and all this stuff and then you could go out and then others say no 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 just travel light uh find out where people are lost and just pack a bag and just go out into the into the wind and and things are back and forth on that so it's really and of course charismatic cessationists we we have real variety and certainly eschatology is different so there always been conflicts um you know back then i, I remember I, I came i came to it slightly late i was teaching up at wheaton and we had to infer a firm uh, plenary verbal inspiration i didn't even know what that was i called <laughs> right. i called my dad when i got the the uh, statement, and you know, I said, "Dad, what's this?" And he said, "You believe that?" And he was he was <laughs> right. And I'm like, he he was he had a PhD from Edinburgh and had taught in Baptist colleges and yeah. so forth. So he was very sophisticated, but he he said, "You believe that?" And I did, you know, from Genesis to maps. So anyway, I just assumed that's where Southern Baptists were. And then all of a sudden, I heard this this thing bubbling up way down south that there was some kind of insurrectionist. Uh, you know, and Adrian Rogers was doing something, on, and and the, the deal was sort of like, no, 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 everything's fine. Who is this guy? I mean, who is this bull in the china shop? Or who mm -hmm. is this boar in the vineyard? And and uh, and I kind of thought, well, I don't, I, I don't know. But there was a guy in our church who edited Christianity Today. It was our our little Baptist Southern Baptist church in Chicago, and named Harold Lenzel, and he wrote the Battle for the Bible. And oh, yeah. and he was saying, no, there are problems. And I'm thinking, man, what what's that about? Um, and I really didn't. And then I felt called to seminary, so I went to seminary, and I'm still thinking, what what in the world? And I'm I'm drinking out of a fire hose of information in seminary. But then I would hear little digs, and 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 someone would say. You know, the, 
I wipe out, you know, the Canaanite genocide. That really wasn't a town exactly. Or mm -hmm. they said they had this many people in the wilderness. Uh, I don't know that it, that would really. And I'm thinking, well, wait a second, what are you saying? Uh, so there were even at, at Southwestern, which is much more solid. That was the most conservative. Yeah. Right? That was yeah, it was very Out conservative. Six, yeah. Still, I'm thinking, wow, this is getting to be odd. So I slowly woke up to this this sort of thing. Um, others woke up later and came along, but then I thought, you know, there's something going on here. And by the way, there were uh, I guess you could say slanders flying all over the place. They had all kinds of names for the the Inertis Crusaders. They're, you're calling them bibliolatrists or. Mm fundamentalists or yeah. <laughs> you know and they say we mainstream baptists you know and these guys are denying priesthood of believers and all that and it was just a barrage and 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 the thing was not only then but when i went to work for the svc executive committee uh the the warning was don't make enemies with people who buy ink by the barrel Mm. And the deal is the newspapers, you know, you can you can poke that bear barrel a bear and then just flood of ink and all their, you know, all their associated press, particularly a headline, headline, headline yeah. all over the world. So anyway, now it's kind of um don't make many enemies with people who have massive PR shops. Yeah. Uh, you know, now it's more electronic perhaps. So yeah, these guys were being flooded and they're turning out these little kind of cheap newsprinty uh, bulletins like, hey, there's a problem here and here, but they were at a disadvantage. So there, there was the sense that I don't know. You could almost say it's sort of like David versus Goliath, but bubbling up in the churches was the sense that something's wrong. My kid came home from Baylor and said something about, you know, no, I ain't real or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you hear this thing from seminary. Someone is saying that, uh, or in the bat in the uh, Brahmin commentary, uh, seminary president said. Uh, you know, when the axe head floated, you know, the, they were chopping away and the axe head went in the river and he stirred and the axe head floated. This shows how saga and legend overlays. And what do you mean saga <laughs> and legend? That's in the Brahmin commentary. So again and again, people are saying th this has gotten strange. And, and, and kind of the old joke back then was, um, uh, you know, the deal with the liberals was we'll call you a Christian if you call us scholars. And I think a lot of these people were were wanting to ingratiate themselves. I, I think even at Wheaton when I taught there, a number of the profs cared more about what Martin Marty thought uh, of them mm. at the University of Chicago than the people in the pew. Um, this wasn't the rule, but there were there was that. And I think there was this going on that, you know, we're kind of Southerners down here driving pulpwood trucks and, you know, with our farmer tan we got red here and white there and and uh we're just good old folks and we go to church and our betters would tell us hey relax no problem no problem and people said problem problem mm. so yeah now i'm seeing this kind of parallel that it seems that there are some elites or sophisticates uh in the convention who are saying hey guys no problem with this no problem you know if we're really up to speed uh, we'll have these sensitivities and we need to care. The world is watching, you mm -hmm. know, and I think the new transaction is something like we'll call the world cool if they'll call us cool. It's much more of a kind of a PR thing. Mm -hmm. And, and today's sensitivity is is just the absolute uh, golden calf that, you know, someone is wounded. Oh, we'll have a safe safe space that that's a trigger. Uh, oh, we don't want to uh, don't be canceled. You know, we, we need to look at our likes on our. Uh, social media and stuff and so people are just wanting to be very very sensitive and i think there's a real concern that i'm using a term that when i was in a national guard unit in illinois with a bunch of polish catholics they used one guy used the word youths for youth oh. and there's kind of like oh the youths the youths won't you know the future the youths will abandon us and uh <laughs> you know we we won't they won't think we're cool what's the future and we need to get you know the capital k capital k cool kids to to run things so we can connect and also we've got to we've got to be sensitive to this and that and i think back in the day we never thought us youngins we never said hey where where's my place in this you know mm. uh when do i get a seat at the table or like hey what about us young guys it was like hey crystal's old thank god we got an old guy up there like that and, yeah. and there is there's this kind of pr you know, we got to catch the wave uh, or they'll think we're leprous or something thing going on, which is really troubling. But still, there's this there was this bubbling up. And I think some people, a lot of people came to the convention in Nashville and saying, 
something something ain't right. That Revol resolution nine, that that thing was was strange. I mean, it was it was hustled through. Um, I was at Birmingham, and by the way, I chaired resolutions in '89, so I I kind of know how that can be a flashpoint and how interesting it is. It was in Vegas back in '89, yeah, well, way way back. But and was um, that a huge? That was a huge convention, I would imagine, right? You know, it was still fairly big. The huge ones were closer to forty, fifty thousand in Dallas. This one is headed west, yeah, and uh, I think we had around twenty thousand, nineteen or twenty thousand. Okay. But I know still, ninety was really big, right? In, um, in New Orleans. Yeah, I'm trying <clears> to remember, <throat> maybe. Maybe Atlanta. I can't remember. It was I think it was one of the big cities. Okay, yeah. What they do is they go south, south, south. south. Right. They go Orlando, um, uh, you know, New Orleans, uh, Birmingham, Dallas, Houston, that thing, and then they boom, they go out to Indianapolis, or boom, they go out to Portland or to mm. Salt Lake City every every few years. But anyways, one of those boom ones out uh, out there. Incidentally, that's when we started crossover because some people thought let's not go to Vegas and and uh, give them creds and let them use us as a PR thing. Like the Baptists came here, everybody come to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> so we said, let's go out there and knock on doors. And I think we knocked on, on over 100,000 doors and had wow something like 2,000 conversions expressed there. So wow. anyway, it, it, big time. But um, yeah, there there is that there is that sensitivity. But what they did was they went through the kind of the ordinary ones. Of course, there's one of thank you to the city for being nice to us and. This kind of deal. And then all of a sudden, like, okay, and then we got these others, bang, bang, bang. And like, whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? I don't even know. Honey, do you know what that is? CRT? Yeah. And a, it's an analytical tool. Like, hey, uh, okay, I'm I'm not a racist, you know, whatever. And, and it's a very odd thing. They used something that uh, CRT, which grew out of very secular roots, and it is, it is a... Uh, uh, it's kind of a retooling of, uh, of the Communist Manifesto. It used to be an economic, man is an economic animal, and you have the proletariat and the bourgeoisie and, you know, the redistribution of resources. And it was selling in Russia, but it wasn't selling in other parts of the world. It didn't take off like a rocket in, in England and, and even in Italy. And so they said, well, let's make it like a cultural thing where you have the haves and the have-nots, the oppressors and the oppressed, and you can divide everything up. So it's like... You know, the straights are over the gays, and the men are over the women, and the, mm -hmm. you know, and the this and the that, and the races and all that. And so it's a it's a recipe for per perpetual resentment. Now, I did a book on justice, and there are such real things as injustice, and we're to address them. But it weds to social justice, which is not biblical justice, in that it's sort of equality or similarity of outcomes, which is not what the biblical standard is. And as long as, and equity, of course, is a perfectly good word they took from um, actually the courts of equity and the chancellorships in England and it was like leveling things so that a guy who was illiterate and he got ripped off by a sharp landlord and he put it his ex and didn't know what he was signing you would have courts of equity to kind of even things out a little bit so mm -hmm. but now they've taken it to be a social justice thing they've hijacked that it's like hijacking the word gay it used to be a good word, and I, I remember an article in Newsweek once that said, "Why don't you pick the word fabulous or something?" You know, like a <laughs> fabulous part. We don't use it much, and it, yeah. you know. But anyway, they hijack these words, they put new definitions in, and then they say, "And we should appreciate this." And we thought, well, "I don't know, uh, it sounds good," but but I, I wrote a shadow uh, resolution or a kind of virtual resolution. They published it at Founders in 2020, and I said, "Look, it's it's like here's this." secular notion or theory, and it's one of like, for this in case, in case perpetual grievance, and, uh, and, and by the way, what a deadly thing to introduce into a church. Mm, um, yeah. But anyway, so I said, well, why not, this is a little bit like taking uh, Darwinian evolution, and no, we're not buying the whole thing, but we could use it as an analytical tool. Freudian psychology, you know, the, the Oedipus complex, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, we're not buying the whole Freudian thing, but it's a useful tool. Uh, anthropogenic uh, global warming, you know, yeah, we're not totally, but, you know, it's a useful tool, like when we're picking out a Prius for our church car or something. It's <laughs> like, what, unless this, quote, theory is, like, overwhelmingly important, like, what we are missing it, we're not doing church right unless we really get this theory in there boy you'd better have some you better have a pretty good case and it was no case it mm. was just it was gas and uh and and actually pretty toxic gas 
So, yeah, people are saying, so that's a parallel with the early days. It's like, nothing to see here, move on. How dare you question us? Like, oh, no, we've been great from the beginning. We're just solid Baptists. And they would they would do one thing on the on the campus, and then they go out in the pulpits, and they're just Billy Baptist, and then mm -hmm. they go back and do... I was a trustee at Southern in 80, uh, 88, and, uh, um, and I just remember Molly Marshall Green was doing this thing about post-mortem evangelism and Carl Rahner and the, the Muslims are working up the ladder toward Jesus. They just don't know the whole, uh, whole deal. And, and then they get to heaven they, after death or after the coming of Christ. And like, oh, there's Jesus. And then most of them would say, oh, yeah, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. and, and so anyway, she's doing but. There's no way you're going to hear that in the pulpit right. in Little Rock or in, in, in Owensboro. So there's this kind of like, oh, we're, we're doing this cool stuff. And if you only understood it, then you'd be you'd really be uh, on board. And then and then you people just trust us. And I think folks are saying, I, I saw this video. I mean, we got, now we have YouTube and online stuff in here. And people are saying, are, what? What was that? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of bubbled up. It is interesting, though. Um, I worked for the Indiana Convention, and we were um, we were the conserv. We had the conservative paper. This guy named David Simpson, who was the one who edited the one state paper, saying, "Hey, I think this conservative resurgence is a good thing." Um, the other folks were pretty much on board, like, "Don't don't rattle the cage, don't stir things." And David, uh, I. He had left by the time I came, but we kept that going with the Ledbetter. But still, the state convention, state executive directors, and I became one, were pretty much joining the chorus with mm. the seminaries and the agencies saying, things are cool, things are cool. Yeah. Now, not so much. I mean, there you have Randy Adams, who was a state executive director, and some of the others are saying, wait a second, I think our old kind of cooperative understanding and work with the with Nam is is kind of it's out of kilter now, and then yeah. others are saying I'm I'm hearing this at seminary, and I, I'm not quite sure about that. And the RLC in 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 our day was like Richard Land, and he was standing strong on this, and then, and then all of a sudden you're getting stuff out of ERLC that says if you vote for the person that the vast majority of you are voting for, you're not values voters anymore. And yeah, uh, so it, I think. It's a little bit different in that part of the bubbling is it's coming not just from what's happening in the seminaries, but in some of the other agencies. And then and then also there's some people who didn't bubble back then who are bubbling who yeah. are in the so it's a bit different. But I will say this, some people are saying, Well, that that tears it. We we sent up a flare and went to Nashville and they just took care of it and so I'm out of here and I think Oh no! Uh, <laughs> game on! I yeah. mean, this this is like this is what this is how you do it. That Baptists uh, load in their vans and they head to head to the conventions and say, you know, I don't think that's so cool about ha having a joint sermon with your wife. Uh, you know, or I, hmm, I think if you're gonna plant a church in Montana, maybe you ought to clear with a state convention in a way maybe you're not doing now and. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's reminiscent of that. But there, yeah. there are a few differences. So you're saying that then that's good. So people listening <laughs> and, yeah. and the like, yeah. don't, it, this isn't a time to abandon ship. Ed oh, Litton's no. in. Oh, no. And now we've got all the of course, no, all this no. extra plagiarism stuff no. and all these other things. Yeah. But, oh, our candidate didn't win. You know, 2019 was bad. We didn't have 2020. I yeah. think it was good in one sense that we didn't have 2020 because at least it gave people enough time to Digest, pay attention yeah, and, yeah. and say, okay, I really need to go because we didn't have one last year. Yeah. What's the CT thing, CRT in particular, or yeah. intersectionality? Yeah. Um, but now is not the time to abandon ship, is what you're saying. As a, as a conservative Orthodox right. Southern Baptist, right. don't just yeah. abandon oh, ship. Oh, it's, it's an amazing system. I mean, I know there, there are faults all over creation, but I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, it's still an amazing system. I mean, I, I, I'm retired from Southern, but there are some remarkable colleagues uh, that are, are doing great stuff. And I, I have IMB folks on the field and I mean, it's, it's a wonderful set. Listen, one of the best things that happened to me, I mean, I, I love teaching at Wheaton all those years, but I got out of the South and I saw what it was to have all that deputation stuff. And, and, uh, you know, a missionary is out here and he's got eight churches supporting him and he has to keep spinning the plates to mm -hmm. keep, and if there's a church split then he's in, in trouble and, 
our system of support for our missionaries and fielding the missionaries is is quite extraordinary and the way we subsidize seminary education where a person will learn how to put together a sermon and how to how to read greek and all i mean it's it's quite a remarkable thing and to just just walk away from that I, this is a funny thing I, I was talking to the exec in um it was like washington oregon i think the northwest association this was way back and he said you know um a lot of the guys i saw this in the oregon oregon trail museum he says that a lot of people threw out their heavy stuff they started in their wagon trains with the piano from baltimore and with the, <laughs> this and that and as they would go along the platte river road you know highway so to speak they would throw things out and they ended up tossing their religion too and so it's mm. one of the most unchurched areas in a sense one of the most secular areas and uh, you know a lot of the guys uh who would go up there sometimes would say uh look i'm so i'm so tired of all this sbc literature and you know fuss and feathers and material and promotions and stuff and so they get out of it and he says there's one thing worse than not having than having all that sbc uh, promotion and uh, it's not having it and mm -hmm. he said you're just kind of out there alone making it up and the fellowship and, and fraternity of, of churches is quite remarkable and by the way when you come to a convention roughly 90 percent of the churches aren't even represented so yeah. it's it's a very special kind of group and um so you don't just know the sbc by sitting on the floor yeah uh, of a convention so yeah i do think i do think it's quite a wonderful thing yeah. and uh and and by the way as harry truman once said baptists are as independent as hogs on ice and we <laughs> you know they can they can say in a resolution hey crt is a great analytical tool uh but they can say out at uh you know berea baptist church and Chickasha or something say well, we don't think so, and they yeah. don't have to change anything. They can well, and that, and that's a nice thing. I mean, that's why convictionally, I mean, being from California, you know, anybody with a denomination is kind of like, well, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're probably not really saved, and that sort yeah, of thing. And yeah, it's all Pharisaicalism and whatever. Yeah. And being here in in the South-ish, Kentucky and Louisville and all that for a number of years now, and appreciating, like you're saying, coming late to the game, but at least knowing. The names, both the current guys and previous guys and authors and so on, yeah. uh, and seeing, wow, this is how missionaries are sent. This is how this church planting and sure. and seminary education and so on, yeah. and just appreciating the autonomy of the local church. I think you know, I mean, Presbyterians and mm -hmm. maybe even Eastern Orthodox, and there's there's high church stuff that you're like, sure. wow, I really like that art, like we've talked about last time, and yeah. I wish our, as Baptists we get get on board with a little bit more art and a little bit more creative aesthetic and. I mean, God's created. I mean, look at the blue sky and the yeah. green grass. You yeah. Know, yeah, to, exactly. to have a bl bland everything is just two thumbs down, personally. Yeah. But mm -hmm. at the same time, we don't. I'm a pastor of a local church. They hired me. I didn't get it in, installed by the SBC. Right. Right. You were an interim pastor most recently for about what a year. Yeah. Yeah. And no, you know, the president, the ERLC, the this, Dr. Moeller at yeah. Southern or. Greenway at Southwestern. They didn't have clear nobody. Anybody. Nobody said anything. No. It was like, well, Mark Coppinger is going to be your pastor. Yeah. None of that. So no. you can say analytical tool. You can say this. You can say abortion's right, abortion's wrong, whatever, right. and say no. This is our autonomy. This is our church convention right. or our, our, uh, cons our constitution. Yeah. And be yeah. independent. Yeah. yeah. That's part of being. Yeah. A, ultimately, I think exactly right. I think it's ultimately a biblical thing. Yeah. You know, believers' baptism and having having these convictional independent things. Yeah. Of belief and so on. When I was at the SBC, good. they would call because I was a PR contact, and they'd say, "Is this the Southern Baptist headquarters?" And I say, "No, no, no, <laughs> that's that's a local church. We're just yeah. the gophers in yeah. between the conventions." And uh, so that's yeah, that's really true. Uh, and there is there is a lot of freedom. People say, "Well, we're independent Baptists," and say, "Well, we're we're right independent. We're also too, independent." You know? Baptists, yeah. And by the that's way, right. and, and just in terms of style, I mean, I, I was in one of the most ornate churches. In the world, it was a Catholic church, but it's, it's the, the Sagrada Familia in, in Barcelona, which is just incredible. Gaudi, yeah. gingerbread wedding cake. Who knows? It was just amazing, <laughs> and it was like Frills very worshipable. But then you you also had these very almost shaker like plain, uh, very plain simple churches that have an elegance. And and then also, I've been in tabernacles out at church camps, and it was just you know tin roof and a couple of beams and sawdust or dirt and benches and yeah. found God there too. So yeah, there is a, there is a great range in styles as well. 
And I, I, I enjoy that, I have to say. Uh, you know, there's some talk about the issue there was the inerrancy of Scripture. Um, do you believe the Baptist Bible from years Genesis ago, to Mass 40 or yeah. 50 years ago? And yes, indeed, people were denying parts of Scripture. And well, here's one I heard. And when I was in Indiana exec, um, I talked to a guy in Fort Wayne who was a pastor. And he said, you know, I'd heard that there are people upset. And got, come to think of it, at Southeastern at the time, he said, I heard that the miracle of the loaves and fishes was a miracle of love. The little boy came and he shared his meal and it just infected everybody with the spirit of sharing and they all shared their meal. Instead of Jesus miraculously, yeah. like, it's like, what? Wow. But that kind of stuff was going on. So it was a really clean kind of fight. I mean, it was just really, and other people would say, well, I'm conservative as the next guy. Don't kill a mosquito with a cannon. Lighten up. You know, this kind of deal. In fact, I wrote a piece on for Herschel on Herschel Hobbes in a book on Baptist theologians for uh, <clears throat> David Dockery and Timothy George. And I went over there to Oklahoma City, interviewed him for about four hours in his mm -hmm. home. And, and he said, you know, he said, man, I just, I don't feel real great about how this is doing it. I said, well, what's the right way? Um, and he said, well, they came to us in the 50s. I said, you got some problems. And we said, and he was like the voice of the Baptist Hour. This Hobbs, Hobbs. Hobbs, president of the convention. And by the way, he came on board of the inerrancy thing. The president of the convention essentially rewrote the Baptist Faith and Message, chaired the committee, 63. Mm -hmm. And he said, that, and we said, no, 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 things are fine. Baptisms are like missionaries. They came back in the 60s and said, hey, you got problems. And he said, oh, look, I mean, look, everything's booming. <clears throat> then came back in the 70s and, and it was too late. Mm -hmm. And he said, we should have been... Um, you know, we should have met it early, nipped it in the bud. But he said, we were just so full of how great it was. And so I think that a lot of people were just, once they got it, were saying, well, yeah. And then we jumped on, this is a little more subtle. This is, this, you know, it's the sufficiency of scripture. Some people say that's the issue is, do you really need all these today, today, yeah. all these extra things to, to get it done. Mm -hmm. And now you're making, and some say you're making a social gospel thing like, Everything's a gospel issue now. Whatever I want, that's it's a, a gospel, gospel issue. issue. I heard that a lot. And so, yeah. So if you're really on board with the gospel, and after a while you're thinking, that's the social gospel. That's mm -hmm. a works gospel. That's an, so forth and so on. But, I mean, the sufficiency of Scripture means it is enough. We have enough in the Bible for salvation, for a holy walk, uh, sanctification, and so forth. It doesn't mean that <clears throat> you can't learn anything else about anything in life except from the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I remember there was a big bug tussle back when they started introducing hymns. And like, well, no, no, we have a hymn book. I mean, we have the Psalms. And so mm -hmm. I have a Bay, Bay Psalm book and the Psalter turns every Psalm into a deal. And what is this like victory in Jesus or just as I am or <laughs> yeah. amazing grace? I don't find, where's that? This is sufficient. And, and, and so and like if I'm on the, talking about the arts, if I'm on like the city council and somebody gives us 10 grand to buy a sculpture um, in the park and someone says we ought to have a guy on a horse, you know, a founder on a horse, or someone says, no, we need to have kind of a intertwined extruded glass thing or something like that, expressing the spirit, you know, or mm -hmm. whatever abstract. I don't think, well, let's just check the Bible, you know, well, yeah. in the tabernacle, they had pomegranate. So, we, I mean, no, we can have fruit, but you, only you can have fruit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, no, there, there is wisdom outside, but the core wisdom, which is what we're talking about here, about like how to do church and, and, and how to, the essentials of how to, it doesn't tell you which kind of carpet to buy or whether to buy carpet. Those things are there. And to start adding on like, oh, hey, we can learn this from, from this kind of marketing guy. And we can learn this from this and this. And, and that's actually central to who we are as we do church. Like, what? Yeah. But it's a little harder to detect the squirreliness in that. Mm -hmm. But but people are waking up to it. That's a, that's a good problem. Yeah. I mean, they have this exotic machine that says, uh, the, they queue up the things. Like, this This guy wants to speak against. This one speaks for. This is point of order. And they, <coughs> they're supposed to sort this way. Well, for the time allowed for discussion, you can't handle, <clears throat> depending on the year, you can't handle half of the people at the mic yeah. microphones. And and so the fact that someone didn't get to speak isn't like prima facie uh, evidence that they were treated unjustly. But it did strike me that it was finessed mm -hmm. and there was an impatience with the thing. And you think, no, 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 you cherish that. This is 
And and some people say, oh, it was a wonderful meeting. Yeah, we had to do some business. But then we had the da 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 like that and say, no, this is a business meeting. This is a business meeting. I'm exactly. glad yeah. that the people can present. And here's what we're doing here, here, and here. I'm glad to hear about the uh, Guidestone care for, you know, widows of poor pastors who died. And when you have the extra, I mean, good, good. That's excellent. I need to know. But open up some space, and mm-hmm. you can do your you can do your great report in twenty thirty minutes. And so, let's talk. We're a convention. Yeah, and that was one thing that even, and maybe I was misunderstanding even then. But at one early on, I think it was Tuesday, asking for more time to discuss stuff because yeah. even still, you know, having a few pastor friends in in the area that mm-hmm. I I pastor now, um, who have gone to the convention and been right. pastors a while, right. and they're like, all right, so what? what I know there's resolutions. I know we're voting on the president, but where are these resolutions? Yeah. And I mean, yeah. are they? We can't really see them before, right? Yeah, yeah they're supposed. To, yeah, and sometimes they the pre-convention ones are. You have to. I, I sent I sent one in against uh-huh. registering women for the draft. Okay, and that's actually before Congress now, or maybe a bill, and okay. I think it's a big deal. But they said, no, we've talked about this in the past, no big deal. But you had to get them in like two weeks ahead. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones they print. But the quick turnaround, like the next daily bulletin, I don't think those were in there. Um, So, yeah, you're kind of in a scramble. um, Yeah, it's like, here's this, and now we're going to vote on it. You're like, I just, this is like seven paragraphs, or this is even, you know, whatever. It's a lot. Yeah. What are we voting on? We're voting right now? Like, yeah. yeah. And that's with Jenny and me. We're like, huh? And the oh, convention, okay. it's longer. It, it used to be longer too. I yeah, mean, we had two major like nights. Week, you right? know, it, that... oh, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't that long, but but it was a longer sort of okay. thing. Yeah, I think we had two big night events. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's it's like it's not an annoyance to let the guys go to the microphone and talk. Uh, now there is, well, there was a little anecdote from Hobbs and. Uh, he didn't mean this in the way, but he heard it and he reported it and played off of it. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, there were two like grand, big Southern Church First Baptist pastors, maybe Atlanta and Birmingham or something. I don't know. This is way back in the 30s or 40s. Yeah. And they're sitting on the platform and and people are coming to the mic, you know, and the world is watching, so to speak. And, and, and by the way, people say the most interesting things. I mean, mm-hmm. when I was on resolutions, one guy wanted to fund more funding for NASA so that we could eventually uh, evangelize outer space. I mean, he was there. Um, when <laughs> Al like was a Creflo dollar. I mean, it was one of those. Was I one need a spaceship. Another year, it was like, we need to do something against uh, choir guest choirs wearing sequin choir robes when they're singing for the convention. I mean, anything could go. So, uh, you know, you get 50 resolutions and you pay, you report out 10. And and not just resolutions, but motions. So anyway, this old guy's listening to these folks come to the microphone from Little Hope Baptist Church up the valley or something. And, uh, and the guy said, this is unseemly. This is just not uh, us at our best or something. And the other guy patted him on the knee. And please don't take this to be Herschel Hobbs' notion, but he was reporting it. If you want the little dogs to hunt, you got to let them bark. Mm. And the idea was there's something Baptist about having our say. And once we say it, and he wasn't saying they're just like little pups compared to us grand mastiffs or something, but mm-hmm. it, it, there is something about a Baptist congregational polity saying, this is what I think. It's almost like the New England Town Hall meeting. Mm -hmm. All right, he had his say. Now we can go out. And I can come back next week and next year and have my say. Mm -hmm. And I think that is now bothersome. And I will say this. I am, I, this, this will stir up more snakes than I can kill. But I think that we have so overdone the eldership thing and so run away from like, oh, those business meetings and we'd argue over the color of the carpet and so forth. I think something is being, uh, I don't know, drying up in our DNA. Mm. That is, that the priesthood of believers can say, hey, I need to know this, I need to know that. And um, there are rocks on both sides. You can have chaos, but then you can have a certain magisterium mm-hmm. that's impatient with the little guy. And uh, and the little guys, by the way, aren't little guys. They are Baptist. They're Southern Baptists. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that does... Um, Maybe we can wrap up with this, but early on in the, you know, even the founding of this country, uh, there was a lot of, you know, the Danbury Baptist, right, with Jefferson right. and the right. separation church and state re- resolution, or whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there were so many, though. I mean, that's where, correct me if I'm wrong, but where we get a lot of the First Amendment, it's Baptist principle in the sense yeah. of 
I'm an individual, right? As Baptists, we're Baptists, congregational, and so on. Yeah. And of course, there's congregational churches in, in, in the past and right. whatnot. But as even human beings, we're going to recognize these God-given rights. Freedom of conscience, freedom of religion, right. press, and so on. Right. Um, and it, I mean, that's, again, another reason why I'm a Baptist mm -hmm. in the sense that I have the ability to speak. You have the ability to speak. You have the ability and so on. Right. And even as Americans, that's where we get the First Amendment from, right? I mean, is that is that more or less? Yeah, accurate? it's an I mean, interesting story. Pulled, I mean, you know, of course, you have um, was it Witherspoon and yeah, Roger and, Williams was under Williams. persecution in in uh, Massachusetts Bay Colony, and he fled and he founded a, col a colony essentially with the Indians there and in Providence, and you have Rhode Island, Rhode and Island, right. Brown University, and like it's even a place where Jews can worship, you know, yeah. <laughs> the synagogue in Providence. But then you also had, and I saw a little play once, and it was called Except for John Leland. Mm -hmm. And so James Madison was going off to the Constitutional Convention, and, you know, he was up for appointment or something. And John Leland, this Baptist pastor, went to him and said, I could get behind, behind you if you'll put in what is essentially a, a, the First Amendment, the Freedom of Religion and, and the Bill of Rights. And he got on board. And, you know, so to speak, the rest is history. I mean, it's quite remarkable. And whether Leland was the only guy who forced the point or i mean you have a variety of things bubbling but that's why the erlc headquarters in dc is called the john leland house mm. and major players that's who we have been and yeah. we were under the thumb of the you know the anglicans and in, in england and we, we've just been under the thumb of all, all kinds of people yeah. and we just said hey we need a fresh start and baptists are underdogs yeah that's <laughs> right that's right no that's good well anything else you want to talk about anything else on your mind i I think I've stirred up more snakes than I can kill. <laughs> That's a good phrase. I like that. I'm going to use it as my own and not okay. give you credit. Okay. Uh, no, this has been yeah. good. Well, I appreciate, again, the time. Thank you so much. Thanks for and, asking, Richard. Uh, appreciate yeah, it. It's been good. So uh, thanks for watching. And if you like, go ahead and comment and uh, like this video and go ahead and share it. Thanks so much. Take care.